Let's talk more about the market outlook. We have seen stocks slide, but our next guest sees some positives ahead. David Sowerby is a portfolio manager for Loomis Sales, which has $140 billion under management overall. He's also the chairman of the Investment Advisory Committee for the state of Michigan's $51 billion pension fund. Coincidentally, David, the second guest joining us today from Ann Arbor, Michigan, following uh, David Cole earlier. Um, David, thanks a lot for joining us. Uh, Absolutely. Thank you, Julie. What do you, what do you make of what's been going on recently in terms of the market action. It seems to be very economic data driven and sort of day by day, if the data we get is good, the market goes up. If like today it's bad, we go down. Are, are we missing the bigger picture here? It, we, we are, but I, I think Dominic said it very well in the beginning, and it's something I've believed in for the last month, that this debate or this tug of war between macro and micro I think the micro, which is quite positive, ultimately will prevail. But today's just another day where we're getting macroed. Where we're getting macroed in the sense of the, the Philly Fed number being weak. And just this lingering concern about uh, high structural unemployment rates and what that can do to the economy. And then ultimately to earnings in the stock market is getting the stock market again. It's getting macroed today. Well, but but doesn't that inform the micro? It's It's got to be pretty tough to find companies that are not going to be affected by this. P potentially, yes. How, however, I, I know in any given year, in a broad universe of more than 2,000 potential stocks to buy, there's there's probably a couple hundred that are going to double each year. And, and I think that comes down to, to the micro, which is still quite positive. And, and briefly, if you can buy companies that have free cash flow yields today of 7 to 8 percent, and you compare that to a 2.5 percent yield on a 10-year U.S. Treasury, that, that, that's such a powerful ingredient where I think the micro will, will prevail, the amount of cash that companies have on balance sheets, albeit they're not spending it vigorously. But the, the earnings, the cash flow, and now the top line revenue growth better than 5%. I think that's where the micro is going to prevail over the next six months or longer. David, just quickly, because I want to get to your picks, but one more sure. sort of big picture question. You just heard Dom saying, you know, we are seeing so many people get into bonds at the expense of stocks, but you're looking at um, several different indicators, some of which you just mentioned, that show you think why stocks are, are going to be a better bet right now than bonds. I, I do, and, and particularly relative to, to treasuries. On, on the corporate bond picture, I think that that can still be quite compelling uh, in search of yield. But, but particularly relative to the flight to quality and flight to safety in treasuries, if you just look at valuations again, stocks to bonds, on a free cash flow basis, not on an earnings basis, but more importantly, on a free cash flow basis, more reliable to me, that's compelling. Sentiment is still more to the bearish side. That, that's traditionally been followed up by six to 12 month double digit returns in stocks. Mean reversion, which is just simply that stocks still have a fair amount of catch up to do relative to bonds after the last three years, even the last 10 years, that, that's gonna be positive for stocks. And, and then finally, j just this macro environment is a, is a headwind, but despite that, we're still going to grow 2.5% inflation adjusted. We're still going to see double-digit earnings growth. And that's going to ultimately fight through this headwind of the economy. And in that environment, it, it's, it's a better stock world than a treasury world. Well, I, I, I hope you're right in, in terms of the double-digit uh, earnings growth and the economy holding on. In the absence of that, you can always own a company that gets acquired, which uh, happily for you today, you guys have McAfee in the portfolio. Um, I, I imagine I'm taking a wild leap here that you're pretty happy with the price that Intel is paying. It, it, it is, and in, in the, in the structure of the deal, the stock up better than 50%. And, and I'll tell you, as a quick example, in, in pockets where technology has been a tough space to make money in 2010, you know, stocks that weren't meeting our expectations, we triaged. Companies like McAfee, which is still a very high quality, high cash flow generating company that up until today w wasn't meeting investor expectations. This is just you know, a very good surprise that maybe validates our opinion that Intel shares with us. And, and that transcends to a couple other names that fi fit into that small mid cap space where we've had good success as a firm. Names like Interval Leisure Group. It's a consumer play on travel. It allows the exchange 
of timeshares between different consumers. They, they, they're the broker between uh, sharing of timeshares. I trade mine for yours. That, that we think is a very good stock. Well, Dave, David, uh, um, before you move on to another one, I want to ask you about sure. Interval Leisure. I was looking at this stock. It spun off from Sendent back in uh, 2008. The yes. stock has not really gone anywhere. I mean, it sort of dipped and then came back, but it spun off around, started trading around 13 bucks. It's still, it's actually a little bit it's under 13 today. bucks today. So what do investor, what are investors missing here um, that, that you were seeing in this particular company? Well, well the first you, you hit right on, which is a spinoff. Very often when companies uh, spin off a smaller segment in, in the effort to unlock value and, and, and create a better pro proposition for shareholders, that, that we found over the years is just a terrific recipe for finding the elusive catalyst for companies. And in the case of Interval Leisure Group, it, it had a better year last year. It's it's given a little bit back this year in some part, pockets of the market where there's been a dash to trash in stocks. But I think from a cash flow perspective, shareholder friendly, particularly on a valuation side where you can get it at a, at a robust free cash flow yield of close to 10% by our estimates. And, and in a period where retail is uncertain, I think this is the right element to be mm -hmm. in consumer is the travel and leisure, like Interval Leisure or another travel stock uh, such as Wyndham, which we own, which has been a better performer this year. But I think travel Dave, and leisure is a good place to make money Dave, this year.